I'm going to show you how to identify the uh, fundamental frequency of a function. So let's say we have the function sine of 4t plus cosine of 2t plus cosine of 18t. The uh, first step is to identify each individual frequency from your function. So for this case, my frequencies are 4. Two and eighteen. So, in other words, they are the constant that is multiplying with t. And now, what you want to do is also name each of those constants or w's. So, from left to right, I'm gonna name the first one w1. So, w1 is equal to four. w2 is equal to two, and w3 is equal to eighteen. Now, they don't have to be in any specific order. You can actually name W2, 18, for example. So the order doesn't matter just as long as you name each one of them. The second step is to find some ratios that will be helping us find the fundamental frequency. And those ratios are actually the uh, ratios of each of your periods. So how do the periods relate to your to uh, frequencies in radians? If you remember the formula t equals 2 pi over w that is how we can get a period from a frequency in radians so we have to find each of the ratios t over 1 over t over n so my t over 1 i mean my t sub 1 is going to be equal to 2 pi over w1 which is 2 pi over 4 my t sub 2 is 2 pi over 2 my t sub 3 is 2 pi over 18 so now I'm gonna find all the combinations t sub 1 over each one of the other periods so for this case we have 2 over 4 and then that reduces to 1 over 2. t sub 1 over 3 would be 18 over 2. I mean 18 over 4. And that one is going to reduce to 9 over 2. So once we have found each of the uh, combinations, we can use the resultant ratios to find a constant that will help us find the fundamental frequency. So the next step is to take the denominators of each of my ratios and find the the least common multiple of both finding the uh, least common multiple is really easy all you have to do is list the times table of each of the numbers so the times table of 2 is 2 4 6 8 and so on the other denominator is also 2 So we write its times table. The next step is to circle the number where they where both sets match from left to right. So the first number where both sets match from left to right. And in this case, that would be the first number, which is 2. So that means that my least common multiple is equal to 2. So if this was 3, for example, we would list 3, 6, 9, and so on. And for that case, the first number where uh, our time tables match would be 6. So that would have been our least common multiple if this number, for example, was 3. Now that we have our least common multiple, we can use it to find the fundamental period using the formula fundamental period equals the least common multiple times t sub 1 and if you recall t sub 1 was 2 pi over 4 so my fundamental period is 2 times 2 pi over 4 and that is going to reduce to pi and lastly 
we find W, O, or the fundamental frequency in radians using the formula W equals to 2 pi over T. So our fundamental frequency is 2 pi over pi, which reduces to 2. Now in this problem, the number 2 came out a lot. But don't let, they, don't let that mislead you into thinking that, uh, you know, all these numbers should always match. It always really depends on how you name these. Like I said, I mean, we could have named the 18 W1 and the 2 W3 and number 4 W2. And perhaps none of these numbers would have matched. But in the end, the result would have been the same. So those are the five steps to finding the fundamental frequency to help you solve four-year series problems. Thank you for watching.